Let's take a few minutes and look at the answer to this free response question about sampling and bias. So there are two parts to the question. So when there are so few parts to the question, you should take the time to write carefully, to write in context and make sure that you're specific. So in part A, based on this setting, your job is to explain how bias may have been introduced based on the way the convenient sample was selected. So it's not about the question, it's about the way that subjects have been selected and then suggest how you could have selected a sample differently to avoid that bias. So this is a convenient sample because the manager surveyed the first 100 students eating the dining hall. So now what you have to do is tell why being one of the first 100 students how that is connected to the response, how that might influence the response. More yeses, more noes, more no opinions. So um, once the 100 people were surveyed, the manager was done sampling, so none of the other students eating the dining hall had a chance to be part of the sample. So this was biased because, or it could be biased based on this story, maybe the first 100 students might be the hungriest since they got to the dining hall first, so maybe they're more likely to say no because the quality of food isn't as important to them. Um, they're hungry, so they'll be more likely to want to eat food and be satisfied with it no matter the quality. So again, your story might not match my story, but that's not what's important. Your job is to describe or connect how is selecting the first 100 students associated to a bias towards one of these responses. So how should we fix the problem? Well, we should fix the problem by using a random sample, one of the most important ideas in the whole class. So to avoid this bias, a random sample must be taken from all students living in the dormitories. And I wrote all students living in the dormitories because that's the proportion that we are trying to estimate. That's the population that was identified in the question. So I'm gonna go ahead and describe a method that I could use in order to do that random sample. So take all of the students in the dormitories, put their names on equally sized slits of paper. Um, after putting those papers in a hat, shake it up. Important to shake the hat to randomize up the papers and select 100 slips. So the students named on these papers should be surveyed. There's a very, very specific way that I could do this random sample. This would be a simple random sample. So this method generates a sample that represents the entire population. So it will no longer consist just of people arriving early. It's likely to have people that arrive both in the middle and also closer to the end of dining hall hours. So we're gonna avoid this bias that was created by this convenience sample. So part B of the question is also about bias, but it's about how this question is biased based on the wording. So we need to describe what's wrong with the wording and then we should suggest a way to reword the question to avoid that bias. So there are a couple of things to consider here. If you wanted to, you could simply focus on the fact that Students are being told what to believe. Many students believe that the food served in the dining hall needs improvement. If you identify that as the problem, no problem. You should explain why that leads to bias, and then you should explain how to rewrite the question and avoid that problem. So um, if that's not the part you focused on, maybe you said and you focused on the bias is generated by this, even though that would increase the cost of the meal plan. So if that's the part of the question that you focused on, you need to describe why that will lead to bias, and then your new wording has to treat that issue. Now, something to be careful of, if you describe that there are two problems in this question that could lead to bias, then you need to make sure that the way you rewrite the question addresses both of those issues. So that's what I went ahead and did. So the first sentence is essentially telling respondents what to believe. So if many students believe the food service needs improvement, then regardless of their own opinion, yes, responses may occur more frequently because students are basically being told, hey, yes is the right response. So. Another problem, the last phrase, even though that would increase the cost of the meal plan, that actually might have the opposite effect. So students that are cost conscious may tend to answer no because they don't want to pay more instead of because they believe the food quality is acceptable. So no responses being more frequent uh, may be occurring here simply because of the cost implication. It might not have to do with the fact that people really think that the food quality is acceptable.
So if I've addressed that both of those are a potential source of bias, then I need to give a new question, a new statement of the question that addresses both of those. To avoid both of these effects, the simplest solution is just to eliminate the first sentence and eliminate the rest, the last phrase. So you should write the sentence, write your new question, do it so that there's no uncertainty about what you mean. So, and, and you can copy their words, take out the parts that you don't want and phrase the question your way. So I put it in quotes. Do you think that the quality of food served here needs improvement? Yes, no, no opinion, done. So this question is no longer biased towards yes because it doesn't suggest improvement is needed. And it's also no longer biased towards no because it doesn't imply that a cost increase will result from an improvement in food quality. So what's important here, random samples are very important. Convenient samples lead to bias. And if you have to write about bias, make sure that you specify a direction for that bias by telling a story. Random sampling avoids bias. So of course there are in this case two sources of bias. So you need to be specific enough when you are writing about bias that you are connecting the problem to the direction. So if the problem is the way that the sample has been selected, the method, then you need to tie that method to the direction of the bias. If the problem involves the wording of the question, then you need to tie that wording to the direction of the bias.